This is the Investor Mindset Podcast. When issues come up, how are we addressing those from an asset management perspective? Now, you guys are managing in-house, so obviously this information is going out to your property manager, but assuming it's probably similar if it's third-party management, how do you guys solve problems based on those numbers to make sure that the whole portfolio keeps moving in the right direction? I think you have to assess what's going on at each individual property. You need to have processes in your in your property management or your asset management. One of the big processes is a turn. How are you how are you calculating when you're turning a unit? Do you have the five day turn? How much is it costing per turn? I think another thing we should really mention is every property should have its own budget. You should be doing a yearly budget and sticking to a yearly budget and conveying that to the property managers where it costs dollar ten per square foot for flooring. Why did you pay a dollar thirty per square foot? A ceiling fan normally costs 40 bucks. Why are we paying 100 bucks for a ceiling fan? Painting an apartment, a two bedroom on standard should cost between four and five hundred dollars. Why did you charge six hundred dollars and get six hundred dollars? So setting up those budgets for each property, and like I said, that accountability piece, they'll have the framework. And you know, you don't this doesn't happen overnight. You start out with one property, you're not thinking with the end in mind. I think one of the most important things that all the listeners need to do is they need to have some type of property management software, whether it's an app folio, which is much, you know, for larger portfolios, but you can start with a platform like Buildium. It's got a, it's a great asset management tool where it's all in house. It does maintenance requests. You can actually lease units on there. It does daily reporting. It's a great platform. You can actually talk to your, your tenants on there. You need to start with that. We started out with QuickBooks, you know, back in 13, the building wasn't around and Appfolio was just a little bit too much of a stretch. It's a little too expensive for us. And it wasn't relevant for 25 units, but there's so many different platforms out there that you can use. And if, and if nothing else, get on there and start using it because you can grow into these platforms. And they will, they're great. They're great because you can send out reports and you can generate numbers on those things quickly. So uh, I would definitely recommend that. So we get a set of processes going. We've got budgets. We manage these on an individual level, but it's rolling up to the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Those are definitely some key things. What are some of the big areas that you see newbies make mistakes on or even experienced investors? Yeah, that is a great question. So what I would focus on, everybody listening to this, get a pen and paper when you're done with, it, with, this, with listening to this, sit down and really ponder what your core values are because we hire and we fire on our core values. And Jake was a corporate guy and he poo-pooed them when he was working for somebody else. But now that you're creating your own business, you need to hire the right people and put those butts in the right seats. And for us, we didn't have core values when we were smaller, but you need to, you need to start when you're small because these core values can translate into your vendors. If you're dealing with a vendor that you don't like and they don't adhere to your core values, you know there's something off. You get rid of that vendor. For instance, our ADP. Payroll's killing us. We don't like that vendor right now. We're not working with it. And why? Because unwaving ethics, they're not people first. They're not growth mindset. They are not adhering to part of our core values. So sit down and figure out what your core values are and what your mission statement is. Ours basically is, is, is the growth mindset. Like I said, people first, unwavering ethics, make it happen. And the last one is extreme ownership. We want everyone on the team to have extreme ownership. If something goes wrong, not a big deal. Let's own up to it. Let's try to create a, and solve the problem. And I think growth mindset for us is also huge because as we go into the 21st century, and you know, there is so much information and knowledge out there, but we have to continue to grow and learn because there's so many different types of technologies coming online. And so many things that we need to learn as property managers, as investors, as educators. So we're growing and learning. We want our team to, to be able to do the same. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. The values are so key because otherwise you might have somebody who can do a great job, but they're not representing you or your company the way that you really believe they should be. And I think a couple of the mistakes, I think when, when investors are starting out, they really don't know their market. I mean, you really need to know what your market is. You need to know the job growth. You need to know the path of progress in the market. You need to know where you want to invest in the market. You need to have your own acquisition criteria sheet. What are you like focusing on? What are your buying parameters? What your, what's your cap rate? What kind of cash on cash returns are you looking for? And one of the biggest ones that I see all newbie investors is when they get a T12, they'll look at it and they'll look at the expenses and they won't know what the expenses are in the market. And they'll say, hmm, these expenses are $3,000 per unit. That seems okay. Or they'll do the 50% expense rule. There's no such thing as a rule of thumb in life. There is but you're going to get hammered by it. You need to know in Knoxville, 
Expenses are about $4,500 per unit per year. You're going to need to get that granular because if you don't, you're going to underestimate your expenses. Your NOI is going to drop and you're going to lose money all from day one. And when you take the property over, make sure that you have updated property taxes and your insurance. Insurance, it seems like in multifamily is going to go through the roof in the next couple of years because they had been undercharging. And I think with all these different situations, whether you're in Houston with the flooding, whether you're in Florida with the hurricanes and elsewhere where I think insurance multifamily is actually going to take a little bit of a hit. So when you're underwriting deals, make sure you know you get down the expenses and you really become granular. And you know, I'll give you another example. You're in a certain market, the south side, water can be $500 per unit. All of a sudden you go to the west side and they've got more taxes and water costs more. So make sure you get to be that granular in your market and you understand how much it costs to operate and run. And that's why budgets will help you because you create a budget before you take a property over, you know exactly what the expenses look like. Yeah. And that's one of the things a lot of new folks run into is they feel like, well, I'm following all the best practices, but how do I actually go out and find out, well, what are the expenses in my market? How do I find out what are some of these specific neighborhood challenges that I might face? Where do they find that information, Gino? Join an education platform and get coaches. <laughs> that That's probably the easiest and the quickest way. Seriously, that that's how I really learn. Uh, the other way you can do it is basically... One of the ways that I found was really, really excellent is getting a community banker on board and, and going to the community banker saying, hey, I want to buy some deals. The community bankers, my community banker actually told me, if you give me a trailing you know, T3 in rental income, I could probably build out the expenses for you because I, I can understand what the market is. Now, he's a really savvy dude. They actually invest in multi-fit. They, they actually have the, you know, their portfolio lenders, so they know the market really well. So maybe you lean on them. The other, the other aspect is go to a property management company and start interviewing a few of them and asking them, you know, what is a typical C property in this market cost to run expenses per unit in this type of the market? They should know that because they'll have any kinds of properties that they're, they're managing. You know, realtors, brokers, they may know, they may not know, they may give you, throw your number, but I think property managers and I think uh, the um, community bankers will have a much more granular approach to it. Because what do community bankers do all day? They're underwriting deals all day. And what do property managers do? They're, they're running the properties all day. So I think those two uh, resources should definitely help you out with that. Yeah, that's so useful for all the listeners here. What else do people need to know about effectively managing these assets after you've uh, taken them down? It is a people person business. So when you're managing, it's all about customer service. People will leave not because you're raising the rents, because rents have been going up. They will leave, Stephen, because Stephen didn't fix my stove. Stephen didn't listen to me when I made the maintenance request. Stephen just ignores me. Stephen doesn't hear me. That's why they leave, because the customer service is not there. You look at Apple, you look at some of these other companies that have superior customer service. My, my partner, Jake, loves Chick-fil-A. Why are they so popular? Why are they, they have that amazing brand? Because it's all about customer service. And we like to say in the B and C space, that's the often forgotten, you know, people out there that are just not served. They're underserved because they're taken advantage of, you know, they're going to live in the apartment. They're not going anywhere. So they're underserved and there's not their customer service there. So I would tell everybody, you know, we use a gentleman named Joey Coleman and he wrote a book called Never, Never Lose a Customer. And it was an amazing process. It opened my mind up to the fact that there's a customer journey where you want a customer to go into this journey and to walk through it and to go from a phase called the assess phase where he's figuring, he or she's figuring out to work with you all the way up to the advocate phase where they become raving fans. If you can create that system in your asset management slash property management, you're going to be so successful in business. Thank you for listening to the Investor Mindset Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share with a friend. Head over to the InvestorMindset.com to join the Insider Club, where we share tools and strategies from the top investors and entrepreneurs on how to take it to the next level.